As we enter into affirmative prayer, in this sacred space, this sacred container, in the words of Charles Fillmore, we allow ourselves to become aware of pure being, pure possibility, pure imagination. And in this space, we fill it with gratitude. We recognize that substance exists. We identify our oneness with the omnipresence of God being everywhere as all things, in all things, and we are one with this presence. We acknowledge that God is our good, returning back to us again and again and again as perfect health, as perfect wholeness, as complete healing. So we release and we send this healing to ourselves, throughout our body, to the entire world, and to our families. We, we send healing to those that are in D.C. right now at the Art of Living Foundation, enjoying the festivities of the World Culture Festival. We speak healing and positivity and abundance on this ministry. We call back the energies that we've given out on this week, knowing that they have done their perfect work and we utilize our divine powers of elimination and we let go of that which is not ours. We allow the faculties that are within us to take a knee to the presence of the Christ within and we allow the mind of God, the activity and the intelligence of the universe to speak through us. We open our hearts and our minds to hear the direct word of God, the direct word of spirit that will provide guidance and clarity and insight into our lives. We speak blessings on who we have to be on Monday morning, knowing that that person, that personality, has what it needs in order to do the thing that God has called it to do. We count it all joy, everything that we have experienced, we know that all things work together for our good and it is for this and so much more that we say yes to the activity and the flow of spirit in this place, in our lives and in our worlds. And so it is, amen. Sometimes in life, we just feel all tensed. Let's then let's release. <sighs> How good is release? Let's close our eyes. Relax. Feet flat on the floor. Hands up in a receptive mode or any other position that you use when you meditate. Oh, we just say thank you, God, for the breath. The breath that is the breath of God. <laughs> Breathing through in and as us. This is a time to listen. To listen to that still, small voice that is always speaking. There's never a time we need to ask what it is for me to do because the answers are always right where you are, right within you. That's the God in you speaking. That's the answer. The answer. So we listen. And we say thank you. Thank you is a prayer. Singing is a prayer. Dancing is a prayer. That's how we worship. We dance. It feels good to dance, to sing, to celebrate. We don't have to have a reason to celebrate. We just celebrate. Celebrate life. The life that God has blessed us with. The blood that flows through our body temple. Mm, the air that we breathe. The feet that walk. The ears that listen, the eyes that see. So we let go of anything that has come before this now moment that does not serve our greatest and highest good because it does not belong to us. It does not, does not belong to us. A lesson here, yeah, there are lessons, and lessons become blessings. Blessings. 
Oh God, my strength, my joy, my everything, how great thou art. How wonderful it is to know that there is this power, this foundation, this giving, this, this receiving, this, this all good. And we, we embody all of that that God has put in us, that we are made of, that we have emanated from. We let it fuel us. But it is indeed the only life worth living. We allow it to express through and as us fully, as a loving place. Kindness, kindness. That's who we are, and it's, it's our nature. Our nature is to love, to live in peace, we need to be joy filled, to be non judgmental. be prosperous because in divine mind there is no lack, no limitations. We don't lie down in worry, doubt, and fear. We don't allow it to take over our lives because we know that there's a source that is God that is always present. Let's take some deep breaths. inside out. Always available, as always given to yourself. Allow it. Allow its full expression. Moment by moment. Don't worry about the past, it's gone. We learned our lessons from the past. We became blessings. Don't be over concerned about the future. It will take care of itself. Be here now, fully present. Wherever we go, wherever we're with at any particular time, be fully present with that person, with that in that situation, whatever it is, it is, just be fully present with it as it. Fully present. That's the only way to live. Attention waves, focus on the breath. Thank you. Thank you as a prayer. Gratitude is a prayer.
So let us bring our attention back to this moment, this physical space. And we ask you to maintain this reverential tone that's been established throughout the service, throughout the week. So wherever you go, knowing that God is right where you are. Practice kindness, practice love, practice joy. Just know that we are all family. We are no strangers here, we are all family. It's all family. We are all kin, folks. But God is the presence, the intelligence, that is the foundation, that is the source of all. So grateful for the volunteers. For everyone who's watching, thank you. Knowing that you are blessed and a blessing. And so it is. And so we're allowed to be. I share amen. Thank you.
Amen. 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 If you would take a few moments just to kind of rest in that awareness. Yeah, thank you, Lazar. Oh, it's amazing what we can flow. You don't even have to ask for it. It's just like the presence of God. You don't have to ask or force or coerce. You have to stay right there, right there. Don't move. Just give us two minutes. Just rest in this special affirmative treatment. Rest in that awareness. Allow the presence of God, the presence of good to fill your senses. The space beyond words, the space beyond thoughts, is where the presence of God lives and where you are. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, before the foundations of the world were created, I knew you and I formed you in the womb and ordained you a prophet. You are a natural, intelligent, divine, intuitive being. Take a moment just to rest in that awareness, in, in, in the presence of God. While we are trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. And we're not talking about a God outside of your own awareness or outside of your own being, but we're talking about the divine being that you are. Cats have cats, dogs have dogs, gods have other gods. Know ye not, it's written in your law that ye are gods. So as a divine being, rest in that awareness. Rest in the knowingness that before they call, I will answer. Who is that I? This I is your true self. This I is God. It's the spirit and intelligence of the universe that flung the stars into space. So during the times in your life where you feel like Job and you're down in worry, the I can have a conversation and say, where were you? Fear, doubt, and worry when I flung the stars into space. Where were you where I honed the mountains? Where were you where I made the sands and I allowed the volcanic eruptions to happen on the planet and terraforming to take place? Where were you? Fear, doubt, and worry didn't exist in the beginning and by Georgia it will not exist in the end. The only thing that matters, the only thing that exists is God and you are one with this presence, one with this intelligence. Know this at your core that everything is going to be all right. Come back to the room and say, and so it is. Feel that in your soul. Let that be the affirmation of your life living in the face of fear, in the face of doubt, in the face of worry. And so it is. What does and so it is mean? And so it is, is a hearty amen. And that amen isn't the answer to, to it's not life's answer, the, the answer of the circumstance, it's the answer of God. It's the conclusion, and that conclusion is that God is all there is. That, that, that at the end of the day, regardless of what comes, the, the trials and tribulations and frustrations and glasses breaking, <laughs> that God is all there is, that you can see with my eyes. I have seen God and seen God's salvation. I have seen my victory. I have seen this thing working out for my good. And you've got to know that, family. And when you are secure and safe and know this truth, it sets you free. The truth that you hear doesn't set you free. Come on, somebody. The truth that you know, when you know these principles, that is the truth that you live. That is the truth that you embody. The old folks used to call it blessed assurance. How are you so happy? Don't you know this is going on? I know that I'm going to be fine. I know that this is only temporary. Well, this is only temporary is still occurring. Well, guess what? There is no time or space in the mind of God. You are infinity condensed into time and space to accomplish a specific work. So you, through the eyes of infinity, can look back on your temporary setback. Come on, somebody. You can look at your temporary circumstance. You can look at the no from this person and call forth into material expression a divine human who will give you the yes that you're looking for. That's the kind of God you represent and that's the kind of God you are. Where God does not change its mind towards you. I know the thoughts that I have towards you and they are good thoughts, saith the Lord of hosts. There is no no in God because we're not talking about a God of duality. There is only a yes. Yes. Say this with me. Yes. 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 And that, my friends, is the space that you live from. It's a complete 
Yes, it's a yes to your divine nature. It's a yes to your assignment. When you know who you are, the world cannot tell you what you're not. And who you are is one with God, set here for a purpose. And that purpose is constantly unfolding and changing. So I invite you in this space, in this house, to embrace all that you are. Because this is who God has made you into. You can only be yourself. This is who you are. And the interesting thing about spirit is that even though we say we are all one, you are a unique one. There has never been another you and never will be another you. In fact, you are exactly where God was when God became you. Do you know that? You are exactly where God was when God became you, which means you are never late. You are always on time. So all you have to do is say yes to the fullness, to the expression of the divine being that you are, and everything in your life will work out for your highest good. Put your hands together for that, if you will. Because when you know it, and when you know who you are, for those that are watching online, when you say yes to who you are, there is nothing on the planet that can tell you what you are not. That kind of assurance, it's not being cocky, it's not being arrogant, but it's being purposeful. You know who you are, you know your assignment, you know where you're going. You know that if the person's places and things don't show up initially, that you have the power to speak those things that are not as though they are. And then from the spiritual realm of substance, which is the truest realm, everything that you need will burst forth into materiality. This is why the Bible says, be careful how you entertain strangers, lest you entertain angels unaware. You never know who God will send into your life to help you accomplish the word that you spoke. The thing that you said you are. The thing that you said you're going to do. God will send a team to support you and to help you accomplish that vision. They may not look like who you expect them to look like on the outside. Their clothes might be too shiny. Their shoes might be too bright. They might not have all glasses. They might have glasses on. But you accept the fact that you are being led and guided by the Spirit of God. And they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. So you move with that intention. You allow your life to change. You allow things to happen because it's all working together for your good. I'll keep talking for a second and then get to my message, so just wait patiently. <laughs> I had an elder tell me one time that everything that comes up to the surface does so in order to be healed. So when problems and difficulties and challenges happen, that's only your healing taking place. Our spiritual ancestors told us that this, this chemicalization that happens, don't be moved by the chemicalization. Don't be moved by the fear, by the doubt, by the worry. In fact, be happy about it. You know why? Because at least you're conscious of it now. It's no longer moving beneath the surface, causing you to break out and flip out and yell and scream at people. Let the chemicalization happen and let everything boil up to the surface so it can get up and out of you. Sometimes God has to do like castor oil and just clean you out. Get it all out. It tastes bitter going down. And you know there's scripture for that. God told Ezekiel, he said, eat the whole roll. Eat the whole thing. It's going to be sweet to your mouth, but bitter to your belly. You have to embrace your whole entire life. You know why? It makes for a good story. I don't want to hear that, oh, this happened good, and that happened good, and that happened good. Tell me about the things that you didn't expect. Tell me about those things, because I found in my own life, it's the curveballs that made me who I am. It's the things that I didn't expect to happen that happened that allow me to develop fortitude and an inner strength that doesn't match my height. <laughs> you catch that one in the morning. <laughs> short people are a trip. You ever see really confident short people in the Holy complex? Short people will say, you are not tall enough to be that confident. Where does that confidence come from? It comes from God. God will then will empower you when you are broke to walk in a place like you got a million dollars in your pocket. Yes. Reverend Ike used to say, come by without money. And, and tons of stories are, are associated with that statement, but mine in particular are the days where I left the house and forgot my wallet. 
It's like, oh my God, how am I going to get gas? And I walked into the gas station, and the gas station attendant said, you got your phone? Pull out your phone and tap the screen. Blue, 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 pay for gas without my wallet. It shows you how the presence and the power of God is intelligence. So regardless of what happens, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Say this with me. I'm going to be fine. Let this stuff be your affirmation. And I want you to know this, especially this month as we enter into this new series. This new series is entitled Stay the Course. Repeat this with me. Stay the Course. Stay the course. And so as I introduce this topic, um, or this theme rather, uh, for the next few weeks we're going to be exploring topics such as, uh, number one, uh, hope. Number two, we're going to explore darkness because if, when you have tools to navigate the light, that's wonderful. But when you have tools to navigate the dark times, you can look at the dark times like Howard Thurman and call it luminous darkness because the light of God from within becomes your internal co uh, compass. So you're able to navigate through spaces of uncertainty and they don't knock you off your, your, your core. You're able to move through the darkness of the night and still reach your destination because there's a light inside of you. We're going to be exploring U-turns this month. What to do when you have to turn around and come back and go a different direction. U-turns are also a part of the process because if you can know that you are being led and guided by God, if you have to make a U-turn, there's something that God either wanted you to go back and get that you forgot, or there's something that God wants you to move around. So sometimes spirit will change directions, and you have to learn to listen to the spirit of God, to listen to the intelligence, the Christ principle, the spirit of the universe, and tell it by whatever name you call this presence. When you listen to it, it will lead you and guide you into all truth. It will make you make U-turns sometimes in the physical world, but that's okay. When you follow it, I promise you, you will still reach your destination on time. And then finally this month, we're going to close with the topic of safe landing. Safe landing is important because you have to know how to give yourself time to adjust. So whenever you're reaching a stopping point, you have to rest in that. You have to allow everything that has happened and accumulated in your body and in your mind as a result of the things you've gone through to filter out. So that when you land and you embark on shore and you begin your new mission, you're not taking that old stuff with you. So today's topic, as we deal with the first part, is hope. Say this with me. Hope. And you know what? I forgot to send a special blessing out. <laughs> Let's put a push pin in the message real quick and speak blessings on those that are watching online. Point your hand toward the camera. Say this with me. Divine love, Divine love. in us yes. blesses and multiplies all that you are, all that you hear, and all that you give. Know in this moment you are safe and you are loved. And so it is. Our ministry is supported by partners like you to make your gift online. Remember to log online and click on unitybham.org slash give it. Our moderators are also standing by if you are in need of prayer support. And we do have our prayer chaplains here in the house, Mother Sharon, and also Mother Evelyn. Where's Mother Sharon? I saw it. There you go, right there. There you go, Mother Evelyn over here. Put your hands together for our prayer chaplain. Yes, yes, yes. And so today, as we walk slowly through the topic of hope, um, I'm reminded of the story of Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson wrote a poem. She was a contemporary of Myrtle Fillmore, although they moved in two different directions. Uh, Emily Dickinson representing the Transcendental Movement, and later on, uh, Myrtle Fillmore being the co-founder of the Unity Movement that we have. Emily Dickinson said that hope is a thing with feathers. Say this with me, hope, hope. is a thing with feathers. And as she concluded that poem, Emily Dickinson said that hope being a bird never asked anything from her. It perches upward in the soul. And many times when you listen to folks who talk about hope, they talk about it in a negative sort of connotation, as if hope is a fool man's or fool person's game. It's, it's like, oh, you're, you're hoping for this to happen. You're hoping for that to come out the way you want it to, but there's no evidence. But I found in, in spiritual practice that hope comes from the soul and it comes from this place of being extremely confident that the thing that God has given you will come to pass in its appointed time. I'm reminded about sacred text where sacred text says, hold to the vision because it is still yet for an appointed time. When you wait patiently for a manifestation, there's a confidence that's there and that confidence is that hope. It's this blessed assurance that lets you know that the thing that's in your heart 
will come to pass. And here's the thing, the vision that you have for your life, the vision that's in your heart, if that vision indeed comes from God and it's not from selfish means, then you are not responsible to bring it to pass. Thank you. Okay. If the vision comes from God, then it is up to God in you to bring it to pass. Now, God will utilize agents to bring it to pass. God will move through your hands and your feet in order to bring it to pass. There will be individuals that will be drawn to you, persons, places, and things to help you to bring it to pass. But say this with me. Stay the course. Stay the course. And one of the things that helps you stay the course is hope. You have to have a vision for your life. In fact, Scripture says that without the vision or without a vision, the people perish. Say this affirmation with me. Without a vision. People perish. people perish. That word perish in Hebrew means to be left unclothed or left naked. So when you don't have a vision for your life, then the world assigns one for you. Howard Thurman said, as I quote a lot, unless you tune into to the sound of the genuine within you, you'll forever dance on the strings that someone else pulls. So advertisements, persons, places, things, everything that exists in the objective outside world will tell you who to be, how to act, how to speak, how to dress, when to come and when to go. Some of you retire from the military and don't realize you're still actively participating in it. Yeah. Because you're being dictated around by circumstances. And this is why it's important to embrace the spiritual path. Spiritual teachings, the perennial teachings, supersede religious dogma. Yes. Spiritual practices, if you look at them, they have a common core. That common core is love, and that common core is listening to the flow and the intelligence of spirit. And when you listen to those two things, there's a hope that comes in your heart. Even if humans break that heart, when humans break that heart, the only thing that comes out of it is more love, more hope, and more God, because that's all that there is. So when the world breaks your heart, when you're disappointed, when your hopes and dreams don't come to pass, when people break their promises, you can hold on to the presence and the power and the intelligence of God, knowing that God will make them either one, come back and apologize, or two, God will send something better. Yeah. Yes. And that is who you are at your core. So everything that happens in your world, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be worried. Spiritual uh, teachings, or specifically scripture, says that we should not allow our heart to be troubled. Because if we believe in God, we should believe also in me. Now, who is this me? This me is the personal self. If I believe in God, then I can also believe in my personal self, too. Because it's the presence and the power of God that works through me as an individual. So God, if I can say that God cares, doesn't just care about my spiritual life. God also cares about my personal life, too. So when the God in you is doing its perfect work and working miracles in the world and things are happening in your life, if your heart is in pain, God cares about that too. So that pain that you are experiencing in your personal life will be healed as well as everything else in your world so that God in his fullness can come out of you. Don't you get tired of working out of a broken vessel? Who's ever been there before? We call it leading while bleeding. It's not effective. You can do more when you are completely healed, which is why you maintain your hope and you anchor deep within this blessed assurance. And this blessed assurance is the God that you are, the intelligence that you are, God mind, divine being. When you anchor into circumstances or when you anchor into persons, places, and things, you become chronically disappointed because persons, places, and things could never measure up in fullness to the vision that God gave you because your vision, if it came from God, God has to provide it. And so that bar is high. If you were trying to get people to feed the soul of a person who's inspired by God, you'll always be hungry. This is why our hopes get crushed because we look for supply of those hopes and dreams from the wrong source. Charles Roman was asked, what was his favorite affirmation? He said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Emily Sands Tucker, I believe that's her name, uh, back in the day wrote that book, Your Hope of Glory. Who remembers that? One of the Unity Classics. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 28, if I can pick a text just to point your attention to, if you're a Bible nerd or New Testament reader, take a look at that text. In that text, there's a mystery that's been hidden, and it's the secret um, of all ages, and that mystery 
Paul says, or it's attributed to Paul, is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Sing this with me. Christ in me, Christ the, in me. Hope of my glory. the hope of my glory. So to tie all this stuff together, your hopes and your dreams and your vision for your life and all of these things, when you anchor them into circumstances and people, places, and things outside of the God in you, the Christ that you are, your Christed consciousness, you subject yourself to the ups and downs of life. You subject yourself to disappointment and shame and guilt and all the vacillations that we experience when we're just looking at the stuff in the outside world. But if God and you is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, then you have to anchor yourself in something that does not change. When you anchor yourself in God, when Christ in you, your Christ in consciousness becomes the hope of your glory, of your victory, of the outcome of your circumstances, of things working out the way you need them to, then the things that you need to work out actually work out. But when you anchor in circumstances, when you anchor in persons, places, and things, you can hope all day long and it will not come to pass. So God becomes the source. This is why sacred text says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know what the kingdom of God is? It's this realm of possibility. So every day you have to wake up with expectancy. This is why you are able to not just stay the course, but you are able to maintain that course because you wake up every day looking in that direction. The direction that you are looking for is tied to your hope. If my hope is in God, Christ in consciousness, right? And God is my good. And every good thing that comes to me is God coming back to me with different clothes. So if God is my health, when I look towards positive health outcomes and the health that comes back to me, that's God. That's the direction that I am facing. That is where my hope is directed. Some of us have to correct our course. And Here's the thing. We do this by ourselves, and sometimes we have to have people in our lives to do this for us. When we start this complaining game and this whining game and this woe is me, can I talk about Jesse? When things don't go Jesse's way, he gets mad. Oh, I can be a cancer. July 13th, I can be just as emotional as everybody else sitting out here. I can be mad. Oh, my God. Hold grudges. I can do it all. I, just, just as sure as I'm standing up here. And sometimes I have to be reminded of who holds my hope, of in, in what direction is my hope, my dreams, my visions, what direction am I going? And when I focus on that, I can say like the Apostle Paul, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed hereafter. And that is the consciousness that you all embody. The stuff that you go through is nothing in comparison to the God that you are. The stuff that you experience, while it is valid, is nothing in comparison to the teacher that's being born within your belly. So that your, 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 your resume won't just be a degree, but your resume will consist of your life experiences. Yes. Sometimes life comes calling for its pound of flesh. And you can give it to it because God will grow your skin thicker. Because who you are isn't wrapped up in this body. You are God. Say this with me. I am God. And you are too. You have to be. If God is omnipresent, then God has to be present everywhere and as everything, including you. Including you. Including you. So don't allow the world and circumstances to take away your hope, to take away your joy, <clears throat> your joy, to take away your divine nature. When you feel that the world is in or at the door and it's about to take away your joy, your hope, your divine nature, stand still. My grandmother used to say, oh, you know what I mean? You lose my religion. <laughs> don't do that. Don't allow the world to steal your hope. If you feel that you are in a place, in a space where all hope is lost, you need to change your environment. Change the people. There is nothing wrong with you. Let me say this. There is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with God. Sometimes there's something wrong with the people in your world. There's something wrong with the environment. You need to put yourself in an environment that reinforces hope, that reinforces possibility, that reinforces goodness, that reinforces love. 
So you don't have to worry about being dry. You don't have to worry about lack or, or feeling down for far too long because as soon as you feel down, after about five or ten minutes, whatever's in your world is going to help you get back on course. All right, now, that's enough of that complaining. All right, now, that's enough of that whining. Let's go do something. Get on up out of that bed. Get on up out of that house. Let's go do something. Put some clothes on. Let's go out to eat. Get on on this phone. Watch this happy movie. Well, laugh. Tell me a story. Tell me something. Yes, yes. It's the presence and the power and the intelligence of God within you that's actually doing the hope. Hope, honestly, is a precursor to your future. It's almost like the future version of who you are coming back and tapping yourself on the shoulder saying, see what I got you? I said this last week. Imagine your life through the eyes of the person that you are wishing to become. The hard thing that's in your world, if death is at your door, see yourself through the eyes of the person that's alive in you. Take it a step further. See your life through the eyes of God. Look at the hard thing, the difficult thing. Now imagine what God in you will say to it, how God in you will look like it. When you live from that vantage point, that, my friends, is what helps you to stay the course. So Colossians chapter 1, that was the text I gave you. Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Just to give you a little bit of background about it, if you're interested, it wasn't actually the Apostle Paul. We attributed that scripture to the Apostle Paul because he wrote so many other things. It wasn't actually the Apostle Paul who wrote it because the syntax and the grammar of that book don't match his previous teachings and his previous style. More than likely, scholars say that it was actually one of his secretaries that wrote it. So it could have been Barnabas, it could have been Titus, it could have been Timothy, or any of the other ones who wrote uh, uh, after him and annotated his notes. But what does that have to do with hope? What those secretaries and those students represented was the future of Paul's teachings. And I want to put a pushpin here for those that are watching online. Many of you quote the Fillmore's, but if I can speak a prophetic word to your life, I would encourage you to remember that you are the hope of the Fillmore's. You are the future of the Fillmore's. So don't just quote them, but live them and then live past them. So what do you say when you quote the Fillmore's? When you quote yourself, what does that look like? What is God saying to you? What do true teachings look like through your eyes? Emily Cady said that uh, uh, my life changed when I learned how to use the truth. She wrote a book entitled How I Used This Truth teaching. And when you use this truth teaching, it changes everything. My friends, you are the future, not just of your family, but of the unity movement, of this spiritual movement of what we call truth teachings. And you have to hang on to your hope. You have to stay the course. Sometimes in the process of staying the course and focusing on your hopes and your dreams, you make choices that are different than your predecessors. I can imagine the Apostle Paul had a conversation with Timothy, Titus, or whoever wrote the, uh, that scripture in Colossians. He would have said, no, 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 I didn't say it like that. You have to say it the way that I said it. Well, guess what? God gave it to Paul the way that Paul said it, and God gave it to Titus a different way. But it's the same God that gave to both. So you have to be all of who you are. You have to have your own vision for your life. You can't allow the circumstances, the people, the persons, and the places to live through you. What do you say about you? What do true teachings look like in your life, Unity Minister? What does your book say? What, 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 what quotes do you have? What's the wisdom that's coming forth out of your soul? And if it looks slightly different, that means that you are the next generation of. So those original teachers, had they been alive, more than likely if they had your experiences, they would have said the very same thing that you're saying to your generation. So your hopes and dreams won't look like my hopes and dreams is what I'm saying. My mother's hope for me, hopefully I'm living it. But if I'm not, I have to live the truth that I know for myself. Because the God that gave her a vision for me is also giving me a vision for me. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yes. Hope is a beautiful thing and it stands up in the soul. And sometimes it differs from person to person. But that's okay. That's all right. When you hang on to that truth, my friends, it will lead you and it will guide you. So it doesn't matter what comes. It doesn't matter what goes. It doesn't matter what the world looks like. What matters most is what God is saying to you. The vision that you have for you. And when you hang on to that and make an attempt to stay the course, 
God will provide the, 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 the uh, provision for that vision every single time. Every single time. Take a deep breath. Hear this word from spirit today. Know that your hopes and your dreams come from God. And so God will provide the provision. Even if it does not agree with what other people are saying, guess what? They weren't there when God spoke to you. So you hang on to that. Every single word of that. And so it is. Put your hands together for yourself. If you know. The daughter is leading us in a special selection on today. Oh, we might have a special selection from the singer. I'll let them work that out. <laughs> For those that came in person, uh, remember our ushers are making their way forward. And then those that give online, welcome to unitypeople.org and click on giving. Madonna, take it away.
protection, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever God, wherever we are, God is. Wherever I am, God is. All is well. Thank you.